Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at the Edge Flow tool. This tool is super powerful and can save you a lot of modeling time, but you need to use the correct settings. So let's get into it. So first, what the tool does is it tries to average the curvature on selected edges to create a curved profile. The easiest way to explain this is to just show you. So to demonstrate this, here I have an eight-sided cylinder, and I've added a subdivision uh, perfectly in the middle of each uh, edge length here, uh, one to each segment all around the cylinder here. And to get into the Edge tool, you can go to uh, Edit Mesh, sorry, the Edge Flow tool, and you can find it Edit Edge Flow tool there in the Options box. But uh, I always prefer to use the Shift uh, right-click menu, so you hold down the Shift key and you hold down the right mouse button at the same time. Don't let go. And then this menu appears and you can find it here. And uh, so just select this and the tool uh, applies. And as you can see, it's created a nice curvature and turned this back into a cylinder, uh, even though I started with these flat edges here. You can just undo it and redo it there. Uh, so this is super handy. Uh, this uh, comes into play like all the time as you're modeling stuff. So why is this tool important? Uh, so basically, when I'm modeling, uh, something that I run into quite often is I'll model a cylindrical shape and UV map it, and then later I'll realize it's too low poly and I'll want to up-res it. The problem with that is you'll have to re-UV the new cylinder you make because it's a new object, which is a waste of time, and it's annoying. Here's where the edge flow tool can be super handy. So I've got my uh, oil barrel here, a low poly oil barrel, and I've already UV'd it. And then I've realized as I've been modeling that this is just way too low poly and uh, it looks like junk. And uh, I would like to add some more subdivisions here. And I don't want to go and like recreate this object. I just want to magically add some subdivisions. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and right click and then enter the multi-cut tool. And if you hold control and hover the mouse, you'll see you get this little um, edge loop cutter here. If you press the middle mouse button, it will always add the edge loop to the center. So we can quickly just go center, 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 center. Then from there, we can select each one of these new, oops, each one of these new edge loops that we've created along the flat part of the cylinder. Just going to grab each one of these and then we can convert our selection into um, edge loops. I have a hotkey for that so I'm just going to press my hotkey now and then basically you've got uh, all of the loops there. And then next uh, like we did before hold shift and right click and then go down to the edge flow tool and boom subdivision added and UVs are still perfect around the barrel no issues there. Now you will notice that at the top there's a bit of skewing, and that's because the edge flow tool is going to add the curvature to the verts, but it's not going to add any curvature to the UVs. So you'll see that I planar map these guys from the top down, and uh, that's why they're skewing here is because that curve has changed. Works great on this part, but on the top down part, it's not going to work so good. Um, so that's easy to fix, though. We can just go in here, whoops, select uh, the shell, and just uh, do the shift right click unfold and just unfold that guy quickly do the same thing there unfold that guy and then boom we've got that nice uh unskewed uh, checkerboard there again okay so that's awesome we saved a ton of time there uh, but you need to know a secret trick about the tool before you use it okay so the secret trick that you need to know is that the default settings in maya don't actually work uh, well with the edge flow tool it actually doesn't create a perfect cylinder and i'll show you what i mean by that uh, so I've got an eight-sided cylinder here. I'm just going to duplicate that just so I have uh, a spare one. Let's open up, expand the outliner there just so we can see it. So that's the duplicated one. Um, and this is the one with history on it. So I'm going to select the one with history on it. And I'm going to increase the subdivisions. I'm going to set the subdivisions to 16. OK, there we go. So we've got this nice round cylinder here. And then we've got the previous cylinder here. So now, in theory, if we uh, do the same thing, so I'm just going to isolate selection there. If we do the same thing as we did before and use the um, multi-cut tool to add a subdivision to the center of each one of these edges, there we go. Select these here. And so I've got 16 edges as well on this guy, but they're all flat and janky looking. So I'm just going to exit the isolate selection mode by clicking here or using a hotkey. 
And then so we've got the two sitting on top of each other. So now in theory, if I use the edge flow tool on, whoops, I gotta just select these guys here. Hold on a second. Let's isolate this guy so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, if we select all these edges and run the edge flow tool, everything should be awesome. It should make the exact same shape as the one that I did by hand with uh, history. So let's just show them both at the same time. And then uh, I'm going to uh, use the edge flow tool with the default settings and boom. And then you can already see right here, these are the default settings in Maya. It doesn't match up. It actually doesn't make a perfect cylinder. And if we go into the top down view and go into wireframe, you can see how far the two are actually off. So the black wireframe, that's a true cylinder made with uh, the create cylinder. And this is the edge flow tool. It's like not quite matching up. It definitely tried to create a circle, but uh, it screwed up in the process. And the reason for that is it's the edge flow settings. The default settings um, are totally broken. So what you want to do is you actually want to use 0.8 randomly. I don't know why. And then you'll get a perfect cylinder. So now they match up um, exactly. So you can uh, go into the settings and just uh, set that as the default setting for the tool. You can also overdrive and underdrive the setting uh, to get some interesting results. So here, like if you go to like two, let's say, or five, it's cool, you can make a star. One is awful, 0.8 is perfect, but you can go lower than that. You can go like 0.2 and start to go inward and stuff like that. So you can use the tool to do a bunch of different stuff. On top of all that, uh, there is also a secret setting in the multi-cut tool, uh, which allows you to apply the edge flow uh, on the fly. So um, let's go into the multi-cut options box. And then we can see right here, you just have a little tick box for edge flow. And you just turn that on. And then again, you want to set that to 0.8 because one doesn't work. And close the tool. And then every time I actually add an edge, you'll see it will automatically apply the edge flow to it. Uh, so this can be really handy as well for certain types of modeling. Boom, there you go. Pretty cool. If you like this video and want to see more game art tips and tricks, please click the subscribe button. As usual, any links will be in the description. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have an extraordinary day.